Chapter 5. The Young Girl as a Living Currency The young girl becomes demonetized when she goes out of circulation. When she loses the possibility of re-entering the marketplace, she begins to rot. The young girl is the commodity specially assigned to the circulation of standard effects. Value has never measured anything, but what has already failed to measure, it now measures more and more poorly. Living money represents the ultimate answer of consumer society to the impotence of money to equal, and thus to purchase, the most notable human productions, those that are at once the most precious and the most common. For as the empire of money has spread to the farthest reaches of the world, and to every expression of human life, it has lost all its specific value. It has become as impersonal as its concept, and consequently so negligible that its equivalency with anything personal has been rendered highly problematic. It is this absolute inequality between the empire of money and human life that has always shown itself in the impossible retribution of prostitution. With living money, market domination has been able to cancel these two impotencies, the one to purchase human life as such, which is to say power, and the other to purchase its most eminent productions by multiplying them. Living money manages to render equivalent what is incommensurable in the personal creations of humanity, which has become preponderant, and what is incommensurable in human life. Henceforth, the spectacle will estimate the inestimable via the inestimable in objective values. Living currency? The industrial slave is both a sign guaranteeing wealth and the wealth itself. As a sign, it stands for all matter of other material wealth, and as wealth, it excludes all demands that are not those demands whose satisfaction it represents. But satisfaction proper is equally excluded by its being a sign. Pierre Klesowski, Living Currency. A quality of exclusion belongs to the young girl, the young girl's commodity, linked to the fact that she is also, irreducibly, a human being, which is to say something that is, like gold, a means to its own end. It is in the light of this exceptional situation that she assumes the role of general equivalency. Living currency, and specifically the young girl, furnish a fairly plausible solution to the crisis of value, now incapable of measuring and remunerating those creations most characteristic of this society, those linked to the general intellect. The conservation of minimal social conventions is conditioned by the fact that an excess of living currency would depreciate its value, rendering it incapable of constituting any real offset to the inestimable it is destined to purchase. At the same time, in rendering the inestimable inestimable, it saps its own resources. The specter of inflation haunts the world of young girls. The young girl is the final cause of spectacular economy, and its prime mover, immobile. The young girl's ass doesn't possess any new value, but only the unprecedented depreciation of all values that preceded it. The devastating power of the young girl will have consisted in liquidating all products, not convertible into living currency. In this total nihilism, all notion of grandeur or prestige would have disappeared long ago, if they hadn't been immediately converted into young girls. The young girl never misses a chance to extend the victory of living currency to mere money. Thus, she requires an exchange for herself, an infinite counter-gift. Money has ceased to be the ultimate term of economy. Its triumph has depreciated it. The naked emperor, whose metaphysical content has deserted him, has also lost all value. Nobody in the biopolitical herd respects it anymore. Living currency is what has come to take pla the place of money as general equivalent, that in the light of which its value is established. Living currency is its own value and concreteness. The purchasing power of living currency, and a fortori of the young girl, has no limits. It stretches to the totality of everything that exists, because in her, wealth enjoys itself doubly, both as sign and as fact. The high level of individualization of men and their creations, which had made money unfit to serve as a mediator in purely personal relations, has now become the condition for the circulation of living currency. It appears that all of the concreteness of the world has taken refuge in the ass of the young girl. Just as establishing social misery became necessary after 1968, in order to return to commodities the honor they had lost. Likewise, sexual misery is necessary for the maintenance of the tyranny of the young girl, of living currency. But the misery revealed here is no longer related to a temporal or economic context. On the contrary, it is the essential misery of sexuality that has finally appeared. In the case of movables, possession gives title. In no way does money contradict living currency. It is an earlier moment which the latter preserves, with all of its accounting that now measures nothing. Once the translation of highly differentiated human life into money became impossible, they invented the young girl, who restored to devalued money its value. But at the same time, she downgraded money, made it a secondary factor. The young girl regenerated it. 
returning to it some substance. And it is thanks to this ruse that money survives. The impersonality of the young girl has the same ideal, impeccable and purifying substance as money. The young girl herself has no smell. Just as use value bears no relation to its exchange value, the emotion that living money arouses is not susceptible to accounting, and is not commensurate with any thing. But just as use value does not exist independent of exchange value, so the emotion aroused by living currency does not exist outside the system in which the latter is exchanged. One takes no more pleasure in the young girl than one does in gold. One enjoys only their uselessness and scarcity. The indifference and insensitivity of bloom were necessary preambles to concretizing the illusion of such an emotion and its objectivity. When Marx posits that exchange value crystallizes the labor time that was necessary to produce the object, he affirms only that value is ultimately formed only by way of the life that has been cancelled in the object, which is to say that living currency precedes all forms of cash. Quotes, as soon as the corporeal presence of the industrial slave has fully entered the com composition of the accessible output of what she can produce, her physiognomy being inseparable from her labor, the distinction between the person and the activity of that person becomes specious. The corporeal presence is already a commodity, independently of and in addition to the commodity this presence contributes to producing. Henceforth, industrial slaves either establish an intimate relation between their corporeal presence and the money this presence brings in, or else they substitute themselves for the function of money, being money themselves, at once the equivalent of wealth and the wealth itself. End quote. Pierre Klosowski, Living Currency. In French, the verb to fuck is generically used to refer to any activity, though with a derogative connotation. What the fuck are you doing? And it is in reality that, in all societies in which man's activity is not free, to fuck occurs as freedom's general abstract equivalent, the degree zero of all activity. It wasn't until the young girl appeared that one could concretely experience what it means to fuck. That is, to fuck someone without fucking anyone in particular. Because to fuck a being that is so really abstract, so utterly interchangeable, is to fuck in the absolute. If money is the king of commodities, the young girl is their queen. They prefer silent porn stars, mute without discourse, not because what porn stars have to say would be intolerable or excessively crude, but on the contrary because when they talk, what they say about themselves is nothing but the truth of all young girls. I take vitamins to have nice hair, one of them confides. Taking care of your body is a daily job. It's normal. You have to work on your appearance, on the image people have of you. In the final phase of the spectacle, everything is sexually mediated, which is to say that coitus has been substituted as the ultimate goal of the utility of individual things. It is toward coitus that the existence of the world of the commodity now exclusively moves. Quote, as long as free love doesn't become widespread, a certain number of young girls will always be needed to fill the function that prostitutes fill today. Qu end quote. George Simmel, Philosophie de la Moi. Young girls in the service sector, marketing, retail, and social services, and the near and predictable future all of the surplus value of the capitalist regime will be produced by young girls. The currency of coitus is self-esteem. Every young girl is an automatic, standard converter of existence into market value. The young girl is in fact neither the subject nor the object of emotion, but its pretext. One does not get off of a young girl or on getting her off. One gets off on getting off on her. A wager becomes necessary. In many traditional cultures, money is the metaphor for woman, for fertility. In the time of the young girl, woman becomes the metaphor for money. Like money, the young girl is the equivalent of herself, referring only to herself. The young girl's true gold, absolute cash. It is an unilateral, fetishistic point of view that asserts that the living object that is the source of emotion, from the point of view of exchange, it's, is worth its maintenance cost. Bear Klosowski, Living Currency. The time freed up by the increasing perfection and efficiency of the instruments of production did not result in any decrease in labor time, but in the extension of the sphere of labor into the totality of life, and especially in the constitution and maintenance of a sufficient stock of living currency, of available blooms in young girls, to give birth to a parallel and pre-regulated sexual marketplace. The ghostly nature of the young girl echoes the ghostly nature of participation in this society, for which the young girl is also a remuneration. Living money finally reveals the truth of commodity exchange, in other words, it's lie. The impossibility of making equivalent the incommensurable in human life, classically coagulated in labor time, in the inert, money, or any other thing, no matter what the quantity. 
For in the end, the lie of market society has been to pass off what has always been a sacrifice as controlled exchange, and thus to claim to be settling an infinite debt.